I, I will call a meet this meeting of the City Council of the City of Soderville regular session for 7-21-22. Open. Uh, let's, let's stamp the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have roll call. Mayor Roger Perry. Here. Council President Adina Olivares. Present. Councilor Jeff Hensley. Here. Councilor Ray Jackman. Here. And uh, Councilor Brian Lewis. We all have, we're all here, we have a quorum, Mr. Mayor. Okay, and how about our visitors, they please state their names, for the record. Joanna Mann from the Democrat Herald. Logan Hannigan Downs, also from the Democrat Herald. Peg. Peggy Bishop, citizen of Sotoville. Dennis Scott, Council of Waterloo. Ryan Vogt from Oregon Cascades West, Council of Government. Tim Bartley, okay. I don't know if we, I don't know if we did. Do we do our public people too? Yes. Okay, I got that one over here. Okay, <laughs> let's miss that. Okay, uh, we have a motion to pay the bills from the last. Let's see, I don't know if anyone looked at the bills or not. Yes. Probably a good idea for Councillor Jackman to recuse himself on the bill payment because we had to pay some money uh, for Lemon and Water trucking units last month, and that was on the bills list this time. So. I make a motion that we pay the bills. Have a second All, right. that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yep. Abstain or nay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. We have a motion to accept the minutes for 6 16 2022. I make a motion that we accept the minutes from June 16, 2022. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Goes. Carries. How about a motion to approve the minutes of 623 of 2022? Make a motion to accept the minutes for 623. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Sustained. <laughs> I wasn't there. We good. Uh, You're abstaining? I am abstaining, yep. Okay. I was not here. Okay. So this is the time for public comment. This is the time to speak to the City Council or Mayor on any subject, including what is uh, listed on the agenda, except for public hearings. Limit time, three minutes per person. Do we have any public comment? Okay, going on. City Recorder Report. All right, we have a few things uh, here on the agenda. First, I will talk a little bit about what I have been up to. So I finished a project recently to uh, digitize and put online all of our city ordinances and resolutions and I am going through those to figure out what we do and don't need to still have on the books. There are a lot of things that need be, do need to be amended and update and we will try and make that as painless as possible. I remember last meeting wasn't super fun uh, because we had five million ordinances to uh, go over. This time there's just going to be two and in the future we'll keep it to just putting two ordinance amendments on the meeting as needed. Uh, so that's the, that's the big thing. Um, over the last uh, couple of months, really since I started, I've been reaching out to people who are running for office to talk about uh, Sotaville's water issues. Um, and over the last few months, we met with just about everybody running uh, for office uh, to represent us in Congress, the legislature, and the Lynn County Board of Commissioners. Um, the only person we haven't met with in person is uh, Representative Jamie Tate, who's running for this district. We met with the Democratic nominee for the House uh, recently, um, I am friends with Jamie Cates, uh, Chief of Staff, so she is familiar with the issues uh, because of that. Um, and that's the kind of thing that we've been talking about. Um, Adina's been to a lot of those meetings with me, so has JD. Uh, we went to the Lynn County uh, Board of Commissioners last week, and we uh, talked to the commissioners about our water problems, what we're trying to do to fix it. Um, really, I think it's uh, kind of crunch time to figure out what exactly we're going to do when it comes to water, uh, because there's a lot of interest right now in finally doing something about it. Um, so we're just going to need to figure out a direction and a plan by the end of the year and uh, you know, give it to whoever gets elected so something can be done about it. Um, we will be discussing that a little bit more in detail during the uh, Public Works report. Um, and today that it's just going to be about what directions do you want to pursue and not make your final decision today, uh, just so we know what's up. 
Uh, so the next one is the League of Oregon City's legislative priorities. So I sent everybody a copy of the list of the League's priorities. Um, and I got four responses from the councilors, and I listed everything that was um, uh, voted on by everybody in order of preference. So I wanted to make sure we wrote down uh, what we wanted to support. Um, and then uh, after that is done, we're going to have to have you vote to designate me to submit the legislative priorities to the League of Oregon Cities. Um, you can designate any city official you want. It's just usually the, the city administrator in a lot of cities is the person who does that. So that's why I put myself down there, just because that's how basically everybody does it. Uh, so in uh, order from the most popular, uh, infrastructure, finance, and resilience. So this was actually at the bottom of everybody's list, but it is the only one that was on everybody's list, so I put it at the top. Uh, next up was return to work. This is something that specifically affects uh, PERS uh, enrollees. So we don't have anybody on PERS of the city, so it doesn't affect us. Um, number three was property tax reform. I do want to make sure we're very clear about what this means, that there were constitutional amendments passed by voters in the early 1990s that limits property tax rates to $5 per assessed thousand, uh, and then Measure 50, which limits the increase of assessed value uh, per year. Uh, so by supporting this, we are asking the League of Oregon Cities to lobby the legislature to refer a constitutional amendment that uh, either amends these or does away with those entirely. So I just want to make sure we know that's, what's, that's what we're voting on. Um, last one, or number four is uh, marijuana tax, um, and that is increasing uh, the cap on uh, local marijuana tax rates. We don't have marijuana in town, uh, so it's not going to really benefit us uh, either way. The state has additional taxes on marijuana, um, and that's not what's up for debate. So it is just that one. And then number five was place-based water resource planning. Um, that is one I think definitely um, benefits all of us. But those were the, the top five. So I just want to make sure we're we know this is what we voted on, and you're good with having me submit these based on what was voted on. I have a question and a comment. Yes. On the marijuana tax, do we not get revenue from the marijuana tax in the state? We do. So this this specific measure would be to uh, have the legislature make a change. Right now, cities have a cap of 3% on their taxes. Uh -huh. We don't have any marijuana facilities, therefore no taxes. Uh, or no city taxes. We do get state tax revenue sharing from it. Uh, but that this measure does not affect that state rate. And then my second one is if we, um, after more review, have reconsidered about the property tax and we put it as one of our um, priorities and now no longer want it to be, do we just tell you that in our vote or? Um, I guess I'd want more clarification on that anyways, right? Because you're saying that it was passed uh, by the voters in the 90s yes. to cap it at five dollars per assessed thousand. Yeah. Um, so you're saying that if we approve this to go forward, that this would give the uh, state legislation the opportunity to re appeal repeal that. So this would uh, uh, this would tell the League of Oregon Cities to lobby the legislature to refer these back to the voters. Okay. So the legislature could do that anyway. Um, this is just saying that we as Sodaville want the League of Oregon Cities to do this on behalf of all cities, to refer that back to people, um, either a completely repeal or an amendment or something like that. Right. So in essence, shooting to the core, increased property taxes. Yes. Potential. Yes. Yes. Seems like they're already increased them anyways. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, well, every year it seems like it goes up, so. Yeah. I, <laughs> The, the goal is that right now, it, before these measures were put in place, there was a lot of volatility because there were no caps. Um, this, uh, the, the thing that a lot of cities have been trying to do for quite some time is just remove it all together so there are no caps once more. And we can have whatever property tax rate we want. So. That's and that was scary. That is very scary. Yes. One more thing too is, um, you know, I mean, I don't like the order. So this is not the order that you're gonna be presenting it, right? So the order was um, people were supposed to rank one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. their favorite priorities. So the averages were calculated um, based on, you know, if you, we add all the ones that were one together, um, and then we compute that, we get the averages there. And then they're ranked in decreasing order from people's preference. 
So uh, if we want to change the order, the council could vote right now to change the order. Because our top priority is number five. Well, you have number five right here, right? It's yeah. for water infrastructure. I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, it seems like it came in with 2.5, so there's more councilors that voted for that. So more councilors voted for that specific level of prioritization. The, the higher the number, the further down on the list means the fewer people wanted it to be prioritized. Oh, okay, well I may be in the mi minority, but I fig figure that's probably our city's biggest... Honestly, I, I think you're right, but that, that was just the, the calculation, this is the way the League of Oregon Cities likes it to be tabulated. And so I didn't we really can't like change, the way this yeah. being as, you know, touted as our number one priority, because it's not. Yeah. Well, I and this was the this was the only one that had consensus among everybody, which is why it's at the top. And this is due when? Uh, August nineteenth. So, we we do have time right now to say we want to reorder this list or we want to put something. Or to else revisit. On there. Um, some well, let's see. Our next city council meeting. I'm not a big fan of number three either. I mean, no. Nope. What does it mean to be on our list? I, I, well, I don't understand hers because it really doesn't affect us. Yeah. I had to pick one. That was me. I picked it just because out of the five, that was the <laughs> so I think one that came in. We're in luck because it's due on the 19th, and our next regular city council meeting is August 18th. Great. Oh, so if you would like to table, someone wants to move to table this to the next meeting. I would like to. Oh, all right. We'll need a motion. To that. I make a motion that we table these. Uh, what are they? Uh, Priorities. Well, at least to just table the item until the meeting. The League of City League of City ordinances are priorities until next, next meeting. Ever how it comes out. Yeah. I have a second on that. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Uh, the next one uh, we were going to talk about the Oregon Cascade West Council of Government. So when I, I wrote this item originally, I was a little misinformed about our status in the agency. So right now. Uh, Sotaville adopted the order, the uh, agreement on the creation of the Oregon Cascade West Council of Governments uh, way back in the 80s. Uh, sometime or another after that, the council made a decision to no longer actively represent in the same way they were. Right now we are represented by the Lynn County Commissioners. They pay our dues, but that also means that we don't have a seat at the table specifically anymore. The entity is still there to serve people in the area. Uh, but until we pay our dues ourselves, we don't officially get a vote at the table. Um, so I think it's pretty important for us to be involved in this entity. They provide a lot of services to people in the area. Um, you know, all of our, you know, there is some you know, tax funding anyway that comes out of it to help pay for this. So the idea is to make sure that our people are uh, properly represented by us at the table. And here to talk about this more is Ryan Vogt. He is the executive director of the Oregon Cascade West Council of Governments. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, yeah, I'm the director for the Oregon Cascade West Council of Governments, and I don't know if you're familiar with our organization, but uh, Council of Governments is a voluntary government entity where local uh, cities, counties, uh, tribe, ports can all assemble to create another government entity to do work on behalf of local governments. We have a couple of uh, major bodies of work. I provided some information to Alex on kind of our annual report, and I think that was just yesterday, so probably haven't had a chance to review that yet. But, but we really have a couple of main bodies of work that we do in the Lynn, Benton, and Lincoln region. Our uh, probably our biggest footprint is in social services. We run the Seniors and People with Disabilities program on behalf of the state for the uh, area agency on the agent. So we do uh, Medicaid determination for seniors, um, we do foster care for seniors, we license foster homes, we help people get in-home services, we kind of the whole gamut of everything related to uh, senior care. We also do uh, community and economic development, so we are the seat for the Economic Development Administration at the federal level. Uh, and what that means is we're a great vehicle for getting grant dollars from the Economic Development Administration into our area. We do a lot of work on transportation planning. We host the uh, Cascades West Area Commission on Transportation, which is a group that uh, helps inform the Department of Transportation 
on our transportation desires and needs in the region. Uh, we also seek the two metropolitan planning organizations, which are also um, transportation related by the, for the most part. Yeah. And then we also do community service programs. So we do the senior volunteer program. We bring in money from the Older Americans Act to do a number of volunteerism things. We run the Meals on Wheels program for the three county area. So we're kind of out and about doing a bunch of stuff. Now, why does any of that matter to you? A lot of that stuff, if, it, if that touches you already, then we're doing it anyway. Um, however, we also, one of the uh, beautiful things about being a voluntary uh, organization is that uh, we try to do our best to streamline things and make it easier. So lots of cities can now afford a full-time planner or sometimes a full-time financial services person or sometimes a full-time uh, technology person. And we have members on staff that um, we provide to member agencies at the discount to help provide those services. So we have a land use planner on staff right now that um, you know does work in Sweet Home and does work in Toledo the, and everywhere in between Air Village and Columbus and is running around uh, helping with situational issues for land use. We're also in the middle of uh, lobbying right now the uh, infrastructure committee uh, to get funding to bring on specific grant writing positions because most of our Smaller cities throughout the region don't have uh, don't have the time to even figure out which grants to chase. Nonetheless, uh, have the expertise or the time to write for grants, and so our plan is to bring on one or two grant writers specifically to tap into the money and help cities tap into the money for the infrastructure pack. Uh, now that's not a done deal yet. We do have we did get an eighty-five thousand dollar grant, uh, partly from Business Oregon and partly matched by the Ford Foundation specifically rural communities, so we are trying to tap into money there. Um, and we're also running the broadband initiative for the three county area. <coughs> so our, our fingers are in a lot of different things, yes. and we've got, uh, I've got some real passion around the more rural piece. As Alex mentioned, we have a board of, we have about 24 members right now, and um, for cities that don't, that aren't member entities, um, the county is currently picking up a part of the dues for your population. Um, our board is one person, one vote. So if you decide to reinvest in our organization as a member agency, not only do you have access to those kind of a la carte services like planning and things like that, if we can help you with that, but it means that you have a seat at the table and your vote about what are the priorities for our agency is as important as Mayor Alex Johnson's out of Albany, uh, or uh, you know the, the Commissioner Sherry Springer out of Lynn. Uh, so you carry just as much weight in terms of that vote. I'd also like to tell people the secret is also not everybody shows up. <laughs> so the people who show up have you know exponentially <laughs> higher uh, voting potential in there. Um, anyway, I. I'm really just here to answer questions. I'm not uh, expecting you all to make a decision tonight or what have you. Um, I think I think I said uh, we went back and calculated the dues, and if you were to engage this year, it would be I think seven hundred and forty-seven dollars and some change. Um, it also provides access for uh, Alex. I host a monthly. Uh, city manager, city administrator, county administrator meeting where he would be able to come and meet with all his peers and talk about issues going on at the, uh, at the city manager level. Um, so, anyway, thank you for having me. I just wanted to come. It's been a number of years since Sodaville's been a member, so I didn't know if anybody was even aware of our services, but I thought I'd show up and let you know I'm here. Yeah. I've been I've been a council longer than most anybody here, and I didn't start for eighty one. So. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, Ryan, for that. I wanted to clarify when I wrote this. I, I think. I, I had expected there to be some decision making tonight because I didn't have all the information that I thought I had. So tonight won't be a decision making night. It'll be more of an information like, do we want to formally rejoin so that next meeting we can.
put a payment for a bill on the agenda. We can get an invoice and have the council officially vote, yeah, we want to do this again. So that's kind of the, the framing for where to go next with your discussion. And just if I may, we had our board meeting today, uh, and I let them know there's, there's uh, several cities that are not currently members, and there was some real excitement around the uh, board for uh, people maybe joining and being part of it, particularly Lynn County. Uh, Lynn County's had a, a kind of a dearth of board members actually showing up, and so there's some real excitement there. Um, but our next full board meeting won't be for two months. So from my perspective, there's not a whole lot of pressure for time. Uh, you just need to make a decision, and then one of the lucky elected people at this table uh, could volunteer, or I guess be voluntold, to uh, join our board. <laughs> well, I certainly, you answered one of my questions. Um, I certainly like the one person, one vote. Yeah. Um, you know, being small doesn't make our, our issues any less than a bigger entity. It actually makes them more impactful, in my opinion. So Absolutely. I like that if we show up at the table, we're going to be heard. So. Yeah. How, how are the dues um, determined? Is it by city size, or is it, you know, everybody pays flat rate? So there is a, so the dues themselves are broken into three or four separate categories. The general dues is assessed by population, but there is like a minimum, and I think you hit the minimum at $300 or what have you. There's a general dues component, and we use that um, chunk of money mostly for match funds. And we are able to match grants from the contributions across the region uh, we're able to match funds at almost 100 to 1 in terms of how much the, that those funds were able to leverage to escalate our budget to be back into the area. There is a chunk in there that is transportation related funds for matching funds on transportation. And a little bit of that money also goes into uh, what we call a special projects fund. And what that is, is um, it's a, you kind of save that up in a pot of money that is not tethered with federal rules or state rules. So if the board says we want to explore something that is creative and out of the box and different, mm -hmm. um, they can authorize me to spend those funds to go and do something. So I've only been at the agency right about two years now. It's been all COVID all the time, so I haven't been able to be out <laughs> saying hi to people and what have you. Um, but I think the last time we tapped into those funds, the board had uh, agreed to doing uh, a housing feasibility study some while back before uh, before the state required a housing feasibility study to take a look at the housing uh, stock uh, threat. I would assume you have a website that we could go and look at and see what kind of things you've matched for and what you've done. We have a website, and it is really horrible. I just hired a communications <laughs> officer that, that three weeks ago. But yes, we have a website. You're okay. welcome to go there and sit back from the screen a little bit because it has this blazing mustard yellow covering most of it. Um, we're uh, picking those off one at a time. But but yes, it, it will give you at least a flavor, and it has all of our board meeting minutes and agenda and all of that on there as well. So the membership, too? Is for like is it council members only, or is it for people in the city? So the membership dues is to have the city be one of the member entities for the council of government. Um, but my agency serves on behalf, of it, so the so the citizens of the city would benefit from it. It has to be an elected person who sits on the board. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that kind of brings into the question I was going to ask. So, say I had an issue that I wanted to take care of or I wanted help with, or so I would have to bring it to my one board person first and they would bring it to you? Or is that something that we would go on site and look at and say, can I talk to somebody in this department to help me with this situation? I think it, uh it's going to be hard for me to eyeball that one based on what you're asking. So, so if, if you are a service recipient, so for instance, we administer the Senior and Disabled Services Program. And so if you had a question about 
how old do I need to be? What does my income need to be? How do I make myself eligible? Mm -hmm. My next door neighbor is a disabled senior and needs a okay. ride somewhere. Okay. You don't have to wait for a board member. You call, okay. you call our senior disabled services. That's what I wanted online. to know. But if you said, hey, a couple of us have gotten together and we are interested in seeing whether or not we could get a Meals on Wheels route out here or what have you, that would be great for your board member to just call me directly and say, hey, who do I talk to? Can we make this happen? What would that look like? Okay. Because I'm senior and disabled. Okay. So that's why I'm asking. There you go. Or, or if in the course of this conversation, mm -hmm. the city council here said, you know, we're struggling with our water issues. We, right, dry right, up, right. we dry up six months out of the year. Right. I'm curious whether or not the COG could do something about that or one of their city planners mm -hmm. could help us leverage state funds or maybe help us with a yeah. contact over at uh, Department you, of State Lands or whatever that we might be able to help partner in that. Exactly. Uh, we would love that. <laughs> so, well, I, I would like to hear from the council. Would you like me to put this on the agenda for next time yes. to kind of formally choose whether or not we want to do this? Yes. I would. Yeah. Okay, good. I do have one more question though yes, before sir. we move on. And so we've been a member since uh, 1980. It looks like that's what it was written in my notes here. Yeah. So the the articles agreement were signed by the city in 1980. And I was just curious. Do you know of any services that you know we've utilized through you guys or? I mean, has there been anything that you know of that the city of Sodaville has requested from you guys? So I uh, I do not know when the city of Sodaville uh, relinquished their membership, and uh, I haven't been around during that period of time. What I can say is our like our seniors and disabled services program, we provide that throughout the region. There, so member, not a member, doesn't matter if you right. have people in Sodaville that qualify. There uh, is an eligibility based program. And um, same with most of our community services programs, like our senior volunteer program and some of our ride work. We operate a brokerage called RideLine for people who are on Medicaid who need to get to medical appointments. <coughs> so none of that stuff is membership-based. I mean, you have to qualify in terms of being on Medicaid, but you don't okay. have to be a member of our agency. Right. So you are getting some of those services in your area right now. Being a member gives you both a seat at the board, um, it gives you quality time with me, which is you know, probably something <laughs> Got to um, No, but, but it, it gives you a seat at the board, and it also then gives you access to any of these ad hoc services, So and a place where you can also uh, be an advocate. Oh, yeah, we're a, we're, we host right now a, a non-profit um, that's the... Um, Cascades West Community Development Corporation. That is a group right now that is exploring wetland issues. We're looking at whether or not we could be owners of a public uh, wetland mitigation bank so that we can drive down the cost of wetland credits so people can actually build in the region, or at least in these two counties in the region. Uh, so there are a number of other subcommittees and places that we're involved in, and it, and it just opens up that door for an access. Okay. And I'm always happy to come back to if as a council you end up having other questions or if you want me to come back to the next council meeting if I can make it on my calendar I'd be happy to come thank you yeah does it have to be a council member or can it be a representative of the so yeah the articles of agreement say that the member agencies have to provide an elected official okay uh, which is the Quite frankly, that's the other reason why we host the mm -hmm. city manager's meeting, okay. because city managers sometimes have a different perspective on uh, what's going on in a city than you look at. Yeah. All right. Well, I will consider this tabled until the next meeting. Yes. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, if there's, unless there's any more questions to go over, that's... Good. All right. Thank you, Ryan. Sure. Uh, if you want to stay, you. you can. If not, uh, I'd love to. Okay, go for it. Uh, so the last thing I wanted to go over kind of dovetails into the next section where we will be talking about water policy, specifically as it relates to Waterloo. Um, so some of you know that I already work like three jumps um, beyond this. I've worked 30 hours a week as the city recorder for Sodaville. Now, uh, it is kind of, uh, I don't know, maybe fortuitous, someone call it. 
uh, that uh, the city of Waterloo is also currently hiring for a city recorder. That position only works six hours a week currently, and that is something that I am considering applying for because that would fit in. One of the jobs I work is political consulting, and that ends when the campaign season ends, and I need to replace that somehow. So uh, I am considering applying uh, at the city of Waterloo, and I just wanted to make sure the council was okay with that occurring. Um, I know there are some potential conflicts that, occur, that could occur when somebody is doing both things, but I think there is a, a kind of unique opportunity at the moment because we are going to be discussing today and then in the future with the Waterloo City Council uh, potentially partnering with them to build a treatment plant and a water pipeline to the city of Sodaville and having one project manager kind of coordinating that for both cities. Uh, is just kind of a unique idea to put forward. It would be very important to say for right now that um, me trying to apply to be their city recorder isn't going to be tied to anything happening with a potential city water system there. They could say, yes, we want you, but no, we don't want a water system, or yes, we want a water system, but we don't want you. So those two things aren't going to be tied together, but it's an opportunity that is kind of unique for this moment. So. Um, does anybody have any um, hesitations about me potentially applying for that position? So working both jobs? That would be good. How many hours did you say? Six hours a week there. Six hours? Well, yeah, that's not <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that is, that, yeah. I'm not saying I'm going to. I just, I'm going to apply. It's an interesting idea. That kind of thing. So yeah, I was just and we appreciate like, your transparency. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Well, then we'll head to the uh, public works report. JD can start off, and then we'll go into the um, water policy section. So, in June, the wells produced a little over 463 gallons. The city sold a little over 448 gallons, um, which was a difference of about 14,685. Um, water systems, as I mentioned before, we try and keep below a 9% loss. With these numbers, our loss was 3.17%. Wow, nice job. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Does that have anything to do with our new meters? It has everything to do with our new meters. <laughs> wow. He's, he's found so many leaks with these new meters. Before they came to thousands of gallons of water, it's just unreal. I found a leak today. <clears throat> I found several leaks last week. Um, Today's leak wasn't as big as I thought it was going to be, so there's something else going on that I got to try and figure out. So, JB, how do you um, determine whether it's a leak or whether it's just Actually, these meters are smarter than me, and they <laughs> say leak. They say first. <laughs> so, and then I go and do a little research and looking, and so far we've been on every one. So somebody's just letting their hose run. That or a toilet's leaking? constantly running and they don't realize that how much water that wastes. Okay. And when I go and say, hey, you got a parent leak, and no, no, no. Well, maybe you got a toilet leak in, or old tub dripping. Or what was that one where the son had the one washing yeah. container? The, the lady's kid came in the house and had stepped in a dog mine and she sent him back out. He turned on the hose, washed his shoe off, never turned the hose off. Mm -hmm. So the next day when I'm and I'm only reading once a week unless I see something. Then I'll go out and read two times a week, maybe. But generally, I'm just reading them once a week. I'm reading the production meters daily, or every day that I work. So prior to the meters being installed, it seemed like uh, well three had the biggest issue. Are you still seeing that, or that was where we were losing That's most of our money? Predecessor before. thought there was a lot of water loss. Mm -hmm. No, I'm. We're losing between, what I'm seeing between all the wells and the compound is about 200 gallons a day, which isn't hardly anything compared to what we're doing. So you're not seeing anything off of number three? And no. We spent a lot of time and effort right. before you trying to find something that wasn't and there. I don't find it, yeah. Hmm. I'm not. Because it didn't exist? Huh? Because it didn't exist? <laughs> I don't believe it did. Oh, huh. uh, that's fascinating. So yeah, leaks been found frequently, and most of them are being repaired or stopped the same day. So, like uh, with the old meters, a lot of the stuff that these meters are picking up the leaks, the old meters wouldn't even see. So we're just losing that water. The old meters wouldn't even pick it up. So 
Yeah, we often found the beat when somebody got a huge bill. Yeah, a month <laughs> or something down the road. So, I mean, the system's not there. perfect. It's still got some <laughs> issues and some bugs I'm trying to figure out, but it's obviously saving us a lot. Cool. Great. So, on to the parks. There's been a little bit of mischievous or danger. Uh, Vandalism been found over the park. Um, the exterior water faucet somebody broke trying to make it work. I think um, I got the parts to fix it, but I'm not going to put them on it unless I need to use it. Um, somebody found one of the toilets disconnected from the water supply. Fortunately, whoever disconnected it did not leave the water on. That could have been a mess. Um, there was an incident recently with a soap bomb a young gentleman went in to the bathroom got a paper towel filled it up with all the soap out of the dispenser and threw it at a tree not a big deal but still it's waste minor stuff um i've spoke to most of the council and showed you guys some trees down below that are of concern um i requested a bid from griffin's tree service once I get that, probably next month, I will present to you guys that and see if you're okay with looking at that safety issue. Um, streets. Sorry, haven't done it yet. Sorry. I'm hoping to get on it within the next two weeks. Every day I go home from work, I'm like, it's a great day. <laughs> <laughs> when I get a date, you will know the date. So, um, the TMDL report. Alex has taken that over for me. He's put in a rough draft to DEQ, and we're hoping to hear something back from them by Monday. If not, we'll probably give them a call. Um, the WMCP has been past due for a while, and I need to call them next Monday and see what arrangements we might be able to make or work out. Right. Hmm? It's just a, it's a water report that was done improperly by my predecessor, and it's hard to find time to do all the research for that when I'm trying to keep the city from being a code violator. Um, and it, we, I requested help from OAWU at one time for this and brought to council that they wanted twelve thousand dollars to work on the report. So, so I need. To, that's something I'll be working and trying to figure direction out next week. Right? And maybe I'll lean on Alex with that if we get the other report for it. So. All right. Uh, uh, do you want to move on to the city? Oh, the sorry. Parks? Parks? I'm sorry. Have we got any idea of when we're going to put tennis court? Tennis court? No, no, I don't. Um, we need a couple more volunteers for that. Because we, we don't want to put double bars up until we get ready to put the fence up too because that way people can use the monkey bars and might right. tear the stuff apart on us. So we need we need at least I told JD anytime he wants to do it, I'll help. I don't know if I get my son to help with the excavator or not, depending on when he's got time. But we still need some manhandle people over there. It's on a weekend, but yeah, no. Okay. And see if you do it on a weekend then I probably won't. Yeah. Or I could comp time or something. As long as it's not good riding weather. <laughs> 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 and we still, we still should find out for sure exactly if we need any more parts for that. Boy. I had an inventory for yeah. that one time, but it's yeah. been so long ago. Yeah, if you need help, do any help in the I'll come out and help you okay. get that inventory so we get the parts. So we get, ready, get a crew to do it, like we always get it done. It shouldn't take that long to do it. No. I would think it's on the main one to push the city to put a fence around that thing. I don't want to well, like to see it put up some day. I've let a barrier grow yeah. up to kind of help prevent balls from going off and down. Yeah. Uh -huh. I still got to do the bench. still got to the benches fixed to get them up there. So we got the benches around the court. Someday. Yep. Yeah. When I get my picket back, right again, so I can move them. So the next one is to look at our city water policy uh, as is part of this public works item. So we uh, basically what we need to do is by the end of the year have a, a concrete plan that we want to submit to the legislature and say, okay, we're going to do this 
and this is what we're going to do. So the start of the next session of Congress and the next long session of the Legislative Assembly, we can go, okay, this is what we need, please give us the money to do it, and just have that be decided, because it's been 30 years, so I think people are tired, and uh, now is a unique time to get help for the kind of project we need to do. So uh, we have been talking to everybody who is running for office, uh, all of the Democratic and Republican nominees for legislature, uh, Congress, and um, uh, sorry, uh, Lynn County Board of Commissioners, uh, just to let them know, here's our options, here's what we can do, um, here's what you could do for us if you get elected. Um, and we've had some interesting ideas come out of that. Um, there have also been you know, very many years' worth of studies about what to do about solving Soda Bill's water issue. Um, so much so that we're kind of like a case study. Everybody in the Capitol knows about us. Um, I've talked to people people who don't even represent us. and like, yeah, we need to work on water next session. They're like, oh, yeah, we know about that. So um, it's just funny that we're this case study, but time time to go from case study to success story, I think. I would agree. Their um, actions have shown people to really be willing to listen and getting a great opinion now of Soda which I'm real pleased about been very painful to go through these happy smiley things, <laughs> but um, I think it's, it's been really good on turning us yeah. around. Um, so some of the, the ideas we just want to look at and make sure we have some good council authorization to go forward and just kind of research and get nailed down over the next few months. Uh, one is digging additional wells and then investing in long-term storage facilities. Um, I know that's not really super feasible. I hope JD is shaking his head accordingly. It is just an idea that was proposed, and I just want to make sure that was one of the ideas that was proposed. Um, I think there's, it's just seen this, there's, the aquifers are not going to fill up during the dry season. Right. right. And just the, to kind of give you an idea, our um, current reservoir is 150,000 gallons to a rough, Bring it. Um, basically, I put out a rough bid, asked for a rough bid on getting another one, <coughs> and it was, if memory serves right, it was 155000 plus taxes and transportation, and then there was another 77000 type putting it together, because obviously they can't bring that big of a tank in at once. Um, and then, with that being the same as ours, it only gives us eight days of water. So, eight to nine days of water at the current rate that the water is being used. Um, if you got a million gallon reservoir, which would be considerably larger, that would only last you 66 days. That still doesn't get you through. And that one would be considerably more expensive. But JD, have you ever gone through the water study that they did? Alex has gone through it. I have not. Because I've been going through it. Yeah. I have too, since we talked. Uh, and there's some, you know, the, for one thing, the water study, there's people that think that it wasn't done right. Right. And there's even comments that say, um, uh, with additional wells, they need to be tested. They were paid that this company was paid for faulty reports. You know, we paid sixty-seven thousand dollars out of a grant to do these reports. And there's also a guy here that did a final statement that says that if we would have put well six, which was <coughs> going to be well six, online and put a two hundred and fifty thousand gallon tank, that he felt like it would solve our water problems. Well, a 250,000 gallon tank, if 150 is giving you eight or nine days, it's not going to give you but another week. And it's but not going to refill during that time. But what if you had another well? You know, we've got a lot of wells in the city. And if the we, report if that was done on the well down there that we was looking at, the city was looking at making number six well, uh -huh. they for some reason, they thought that that well only would be a primary was going to su supply the whole thing. Right. But with the output of it, it would have, plus the 250,000 gallon tank, it would have. My understanding of that, Brian, is that that was tested 
during the season when all the wells are going well and was not tested when all the wells are dried up. That's when it needs to be tested. That's when they would know for sure whether it would be able to produce and keep it going. Well, I've got three wells that I can tap right. into right now and get water out of. So I think a lot of it depends on where we're taking the water sure. from because there's other yep. aquifers. I um, called Nugent. Chuck Nugent, thank you, um, for a personal reason, because I want to find out if there's a will on my property. And um, taking with a grain of salt and understanding that he sells drilling, understandably, but I would also consider him kind of an expert for drilling. He said, you guys have lots of water up there. You just need more wells. And I think that's a pretty simplistic response, but it made me kind of think about, you know, Maybe we do need to look into the wells that we have that are currently functioning or the wells that we've looked at before. I mean, it's is it going to be a piecemeal thing and we're going to have a lot of wells? As long as we have the water, I don't think we care really where it comes from. So I like the idea of that being one of the things we're looking into. Yeah. I know if I talk to some of the guys that are down at the bottom, down lower, they don't kind of have water and they're all supplied by a well. That's where well six, it was on lowlands, you know, compared to all the other wells which are, you know, up on the hillside. You know, if you get down to the flats, you know, from what I understood, it was capable of handling 23 gallons, you know, per minute. I don't know if you read the same, same thing in the report, but that's yeah. the way I interpreted it. You know, they tried to get 36 <laughs> gallons per minute out of it to supply the whole city, and yeah, it, it failed, to, you know, to perform at that level, you know, on a consistent basis. But they felt that 23 gallons per minute was sustainable. Yeah, we don't have yeah. one well that does everything. We have to use several wells. And none of the wells can run even near what their maximum rating or what the uh, water rights say we can run them at. They won't even go near that. I think at 23, if you're doing like uh, seven minutes on, 10 minutes off, or maybe it's the other way around. I calculated it out at one time, but it's about a hundred and fifty some odd thousand gallons a month yeah, and at twenty three right. gallons. You know, like say on and off. You yeah. know, and I that's think it's around three are. times per hour. Yeah. And if it works during the summer season, then that would be fine to supplement and keep us going. I'm just saying, right. I, I agree with Adina. You know, I think it's definitely something that we want to keep as an option as, as looking at. Yeah. Maybe we can get a grant to look into it. Well, we already did. We already did. <laughs> yeah. and then we, we need a better study yeah. then. Yes. And then tying it in is another issue. Do you have to have pump stations? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was all part of what they were right. researching, you know, in, in the past. They just, uh, like I said, I just don't think the interpretations were done correctly. Yeah. My, my read of this, you know, looking at projects like I've done like this in the past, when you talk to an engineer or an attorney, they're going to answer exactly the question you ask them, exactly. but they know exactly what you're asking and you don't. You may end up asking them a different question than you think. It's a problem. <laughs> uh, so, you know, we didn't ask, hey, is this going to work in the summer? That resulted in us not figuring out whether or not the well is going to go dry in a dry period. Right. And, you know, there was some miscommunication <coughs> between, uh, I guess, the previous city administrator and the G the engineering team and then with uh, the state about, you know, is this... Um, is this a primary well, well or is this a supplemental well? Um, ultimately, a lot of this seems like there were administrative issues that resulted in the wrong questions being asked that corrupted the data beyond its usability. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I agree. It would be nice to be able to see if we can go back to USDA and Business Story and go, hey, that really got screwed up. Is there any grace to try and get this done again? Um, and that's, that's a conversation that will continue you know that things are kind of running smoothly now. I know the last six months have basically just been like cleanup mode. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm not in cleanup mode anymore. I'm in do stuff mode. Let's do stuff so, now. Yeah, exactly. I think that's what we need to do. I think we need to try to resubmit our findings. Even if we, that well needs to be tested like September, October. I would say late August, September would be ideal. Instead of the middle of the winter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think we need to keep these other ones, you know, on the yeah. table as well. But I really think that, you know, if, I mean, the primary thing, you know, the primary resource for the city of Sotaville is water. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's our primary income. So if we can keep it local, we're better off. If we've got to do a tie, I mean, you know, for now and the future, then 
to keep our city viable, we got to do it. But you yeah. know, like I say, we need to see our, what our options are. Exactly. Well, the next thing we'll, we'll go over again is the Intertie Project with Lebanon. So that kind of the the standing mm -hmm. recommendation from uh, the report that went through was build an Intertie with Lebanon, and I have found exactly zero people who support that. Uh, not the least of which reason is that base rates are probably going to quadruple. Uh, everybody here is too poor to pay that. We don't want to pay $200 a month for a minimal amount of water. <laughs> I don't know anybody who wants to do that in this town or on the council. It's just, it's not going to happen, sadly. Well, and there's things in here that says that it's going to be so expensive yeah. and that it's not going to be feasible, that we would be better off trucking water still than yeah. tying in the well, some of it depends on who pays for it. We've talked to everybody. We've talked to is amenable to uh, either getting money from the legislature or Congress or a mix of both to just give us the money to build something. People understand that there's a problem that we can't fix ourselves, and there's a lot of political will right now to just fix what's going on. So yeah. people are down to get money for a permanent solution. That's encouraging. And yeah. they are looking to us to come with some solutions yeah. and recommendations. Exactly. Um, this might come as a surprise to Waterloo, but uh, the state has actually considered Waterloo as part of this in the past, um, routing the, the inner tie through Waterloo and then here or vice versa. Were you aware of anything like that? Uh, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, right? No, it, it's funny, reading some of all this, all this history, we've got a book of what we've been talking about, your city has come up. Um, and I, I did reach out to uh, Business Oregon and USDA have been covering this with us for several years. And I said, hey, what if we built a treatment plant in Waterloo and piped it over here? And they already had an answer about the cost preference. They said, no, it's going to be way more expensive, um, which well, was uh, interesting. I don't think it would be one more expensive. Yeah, and I, I don't know where the numbers are coming from, but so they're just saying is that's what they think. For a, in 17, which is a few years ago, a raw water treatment system, standard 200 to 1,000 gallons per minute, was between 975 and 3 million. So if you could do a small, it would be the smaller end of that to supply Waterloo if they wanted and us. And the most expensive thing would be the piping going to Lebanon's four miles, going to the river's about three. But then two, you gotta look at, is that gonna be a different agency? I can't think of the problem okay, right now. Sorry, Katie. Hmm? I'm sorry. I was going to say they were planning on tying in down at Cascade. Yeah, right. we have to pay for all the pipe to get four right. miles from where there is ends. Uh, and they want Lebanon, when we talked to them last, they want to put a 16-inch pipe in. I think what your study had was a 4-inch pipe, and Six. Lebanon is not willing to pay the difference. They would want us to pay the whole thing. Right. Or in this case, they want the state to pay the whole thing, which if the state's paying for it, great. It doesn't right. matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if I think uh, I've, I've mentioned uh, to a few different people in here, if we were to, if we were to pay for this ourselves, again, the current estimate for the pipeline that I got from USDA and Business Oregon, and I don't know if they were talking about a 4-inch or 16-inch, but they said whatever their version of the pipeline was was $6.5 million. Uh, if we just passed a bond, just the amount of our current property tax rates, uh, we would pay that off in 764 years, just the principal. <laughs> um, so obviously we can't do that. Um, what is Waterloo pay for their water? Waterloo is 100% well driven, and that's the reason I brought. Or I asked a member of the Waterloo Council to come here today. This is uh, Dennis Scott. Um, is that uh, we think there is some common interest with potentially working with Waterloo to do that, but I want to make sure the council is interested in pursuing something with Waterloo. And Waterloo themselves needs to be okay. And there needs to be some very specific conditions set. Uh, one is that we're not trying to boss anybody around. We are here to be equal partners. Two, the state of Oregon says Waterloo has to initiate that. We can't initiate it on Waterloo's behalf, so we literally can't tell you what to do. Just want to make sure we're not trying to butt in and take over. Uh, the state is very clear that they think you're taking point on anything that starts over in your city. We're not coming in and we are Take having some issues with some of our wells. Mm -hmm. gotcha. uh, I've heard that in the past that you, some of your wells over in yeah. the city are kind of not real quality. Yeah. 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 So the, I've heard that you share of wells and then they have to limit their usage because they go, <laughs> yeah. Know, they can, like, we know about much. water restrictions. <laughs> yep. So the suggestion came from uh, Commissioner William Tucker at Lynn County who talked about uh, some of the water problems Waterloo is having. So the idea right now 
uh, would be build a water treatment plant in Waterloo. Uh, one, American, again, we make it very clear, state or the federal government or a combination of the two would pay for that. Nobody here pays for it because nobody here has the money. Um, going beyond that, uh, people in Waterloo would not be forced to participate in this. I know a lot of people like their wells, they like their septic systems. So if we build a treatment plant and a city water system is put in place that is again funded by somebody else, Waterloo residents will not be forced to participate. I think that's very clear to make sure. And we're only talking water, we're not talking wastewater. No, just water, no wastewater. Water. Um, there are a few different ways we could govern that. It you know, would be prudent to create a water district uh, possibly that is an independent government agency that has its own elected board of directors. Um, again, that one would be all funded by utility fees that wouldn't be enacted. Um, I think water districts can levy property taxes, but the idea would be make it one that's only funded by uh, utility payments, not by property taxes. Um, so I understand Waterloo had a survey last year about um, city water, things like that. Waterloo residents don't pay a city property tax, and they don't want to, right? Exactly. Um, and uh, they don't want a water system funded by property taxes. So um, a water district would be one that's created with all the infrastructure first put in place by the federal government or the state government, and then paid for in the future solely through utility bills. Uh, it could also be governed by a 190 agreement where you know, there's a joint you know, panel governed by Sotoville and Waterloo that controls it. Um, and we share resources, staff time to manage it as need be. Again, all funded by utility bills. Yeah, if we get the water rights, if we choose to go that way, we get the water rights to do that. Yeah. So I, I think this is a very interesting proposal, a very interesting idea, and a very unique time to get it done. Um, so I just want to make sure if the council is interested in pursuing that at a formal level. Now, Director Burns and I did speak with their city recorder in there about this a couple days ago. Um, and the next step is that I will be going to their next city council meeting uh, to talk about it and see. And again, they're going to have to sign off on it before the state even thinks about it. So, you all think that's a good idea? I thought it's been a good idea for quite a few years since the wells are doing what we've been doing. Well, I think I that's that a okay. option number two is what I think. Yeah, two cities get more attention than just one. Yeah. I do. I just think that, you know, like say for option number two, you know, yeah. you know we'd have to see exactly, you know, how, how it's all going to pan out, right? I mean, yeah. So you don't have any residents right now that are in city water, everybody's on the well? We, everybody's on the well. Okay. Yeah, we don't have any city water. So a stupid question that I asked already and I forgot the answer. Where would the water come from? The San Diego River. So, I, so do you have any general comments to offer just kind of as a, a member of the leader in water? We're looking at uh, water rights that they would allow, the state would allow you to draw water from the river. That's something that would have to be discussed, and I, Business Oregon said that, yeah, that is, that is something that would be considered as part of it. Um, just because we say we're going to do this, we still need to get the water rights. So that is, that is something that Business Oregon has already prized needs to be part of the research process. I wonder if we talk to the county also, because they might have an interest in it with their huge park and campground. Possible. Yeah. So what what will happen ultimately if we sign off on it and Waterloo signs off on it, then uh, the regional solutions team for the region will uh, be convened, and then we will all sit at the table and go, okay, here's what we want to do. How do we get it done? And then they're tasked with helping us get it done and making sure we get the money to be able to do it. Uh, <coughs> and then ultimately, hopefully, by the end of the year, we have a plan that we can take to uh, the state and the feds and go, okay, here's how much it costs. Give it to us. Right. Give it to us. Well, that's all we need is more detail, right? Exactly, exactly how we're going to be able to pin it in to, to his point. You know, are we going to be able to get water rights? Yeah. Um, that would be covered by the regional solutions plan. Right. So. <coughs> and this is probably a very detailed question and not the time to ask it, but when you talk about treating the water, um, would that be fluoridation? Or do you have to fluoridate the water? Chlorine. Fluoride? No, okay. I wouldn't think. That's one. I mean, I want water. I want to be able to water my lawn and have a garden. But I, one of the things about leveling that I'm kind of wrinkling my nose in is I don't really want fluoridated water. So. Yeah, it would probably there would have to be some sort of treatment. I would assume there'd be some chlorination, and possibly there'd have to be a couple 
chlorinating stations closer to here because it's, it's not going to push it all the way over. To get it the right amount at the end of the line, our lines, we'd have to have a station or two possibly. That's part of the problem too. Our water is some of the best water around right now, mm -hmm. so <laughs> it's hard to give that up. And what water rights do we have in Sutterville currently? Just to our aquifers that we're using probably. We have three different water rights. One of them covers well three, four, and five. One of them covers well one, and the other one covers well two. I do not have their numbers with me, but if you need that, I can get that. So if we was to use another well, would we have the water right for that? Absolutely. Yeah. And I know it, we put it wound up with three online. We bought that from a resident, and being so it was out of city limits, that we had to own the property and the easement down to it. So we, like uh, Harrington's got two monitor wells up on his property that no one used the water off of. They're there for that they have to blast it and cause damage to wells. Had to put monitoring wells up on there. I guess there's two wells up there that are for monitoring, they're not being used, but there again, I don't know if we could get the rights to actually use that water. Or well, if we could even get Harrington to let us do this. But uh, the water's there, but you know, I don't know if this, I don't know if the state now would allow us to use wells off our city city. When I met with Mr. Harrington some time ago, at that time he was not really willing to work with us at all because of the people that were here prior. Yes, they, they're, 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 they're yeah. over here and maybe we can, you know, I know Tim's a good friend of Tom Harrington right. and... I, I know it's, it's been a little bit of time, so... Right, so chances are, if, if, but I'm not, again, I'm not even sure the state would allow us to use those wells because they're not in city, city property. Right. So if somebody's got a well, like I've got three wells, do I have water rights to all three of those that I can? Um, I'm not even sure if you private wells have water rights to them or not. I don't know. I, I've got a well on my property that was put drilled in, uh, what was that, was 73. I don't even think we, we got water rights to that, but I got a well. I don't know it if it's it huh? by county, but I have friends that are trying to get water rights, water rights for their own farm. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's really hard to monitor it with old wells, so I don't I know, know if you're on a creek or a river, you have to have one. But I don't know about the wells. Yeah. yeah. Well, do we want to have a formal motion to uh, consider partnering with the City of Waterloo to um, create a joint water system? This will uh, yeah. be one that, again, Councilor yeah. Jackman will have to abstain from because he's currently making money off our, our water solution, which is trucking well, in. It's costing me money, right? Yeah. yeah that's true. <laughs> I think it needs to be one of our I think we ought to go, you know, if the council, if this council agrees, I think we ought to check it out and see if it is feasible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't I, want to be pushed into it, like, kind of like what we were trying to get pushed into Lebanon, but yeah. I would like to see it as an option. Yeah. yeah. So, so, we have a motion to, uh, address this issue and see what the feasibility is of it. I make a motion that we check into the feasibility of a partnership with Waterloo um, as far as maybe having them go forward with a water treatment plant and uh, help them to supply Sodaville with water. I have a second that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Abstain. Look at Gary's. Okay, we got a couple of ordinance hearings now. Uh, so your ordinance script is uh, <laughs> there for you. Yes, I know. I've been, I've been dreading this the whole night. Okay, what was that? Oh, that was the hearing will be conducted as follows. I will make an opening statement and state any ground rules. This will be followed by disclosure of ex parte contact or conflict of interest on the part of council members, city recorder, Alex Mahadden will present the ordinance. Council members may ask questions of the speaker at any point of the hearing. The public will have the opportunity to ask questions during their public testimony. Okay, go on down. 
But testify, please give your, your name, address, for the recording, please, for those testifying, testifying, please give testimony related to the application and be as concise as possible, although this is not necessary in most hearings. We may ask to limit your testimony to no more than three minutes. Does any member of the audience have any objection to the City Council or jurisdiction in this matter? Does any member of the City Council have a conflict of interest with regards to this request? If so, please indicate by, na by nature of your conflict of interest and leave a table if necessary. Has any council member had pre-hearing contact with any party involved in the case in either against the proposal? If, if so, please explain your pre-hearing contact. Uh, I will go ahead and say that uh, what we're talking about here today is uh, transforming our park rules into an ordinance. Right now they're a resolution and can't really be enforced, but they need to be an ordinance so that they can be enforced. Um, so the, the structure of this comes from some best practices and then some conversations with counselor about councils about what they would like to see uh, in an ordinance change. Um, and then, of course, uh, Mayor Perry and I did sit down with uh, the person who had an event last week and spoke at length about kind of our, our plans about what we're going to do. So those were some of the communications that were had before. Uh, and then Councilor Adina was also one of the people who had uh, talked with me a little bit about um, what they want to see in an ordinance as well. So this is supposed to reflect staff comments and uh, comments we've had with members of the public about what they would like to see out of an ordinance. So there's that. Does any, anyone on the council staff have any questions? Okay, so now you're going to read the ordinance, or...? Yeah, so I'll go over what we're here to do today. So uh, we have a set of park rules that were passed in 2012, uh, and there was a resolution enacted by the council that created a list of rules, uh, but the rules aren't currently uh, set up as an ordinance. Uh, so right now, if somebody violates one of these park rules, um, and uh, I call the sheriff, they're going to say, you know, what ordinance did they violate? I'm going to say, well, it wasn't technically an ordinance. And they're going to say, then we technically don't care. Um, uh, the agreement we have with the uh, Lynn County Justice Court in Lebanon says that they only prosecute uh, offenses against city ordinances. So if somebody comes on the park grounds right now and violates the park rules, there is nothing we can do. So uh, we need to do something about that. It's a pretty simple case here. So. Uh, the idea was mainly to um, just take the rules we have and then uh, adopt them into an ordinance. Uh, the big change was uh, adding some um, additional provisions about um, uh, how, what kind of agreement needs to be made with people uh, if they're going to use uh, the city park for an event or to do uh, specifically sales, so um, operating concessions, soliciting or selling or vending anything um, and then participating in activities. Um, right, it, it's a pretty common practice for there to be a fee. Uh, right now we don't have a fee for use of city facilities. Um, so this basically says there's gonna be a fee and that'll be in the fee ordinance. We're not putting the fee in this ordinance. We wanna put all the fees in the same place. Um, and then it also says that anybody's going to use uh, our city parks for um, selling or anything like that. They need to have their own insurance, uh, which is again a pretty common practice, and also indemnify and hold harmless the city. Um, under the current rules, the city recorder just signs um, any agreement just with the authorization of the council. The assumption is that if somebody's, the ordinance is kind of the council saying, here's what we want to do. Uh, the city recorder then says, the council already agreed to this person who wants to apply. Um, now I did have uh, one thing we can talk about. You all got a uh, version of the ordinance today and it was also passed out here. That is one word difference from uh, the one that was handed out last week. Um, the title of the city's chief executive officer changes every few years between administrator and recorder. It keeps bouncing back. So uh, all over the place, every other ordinance or resolution I read, the title of the city recorder or administrator is different. So uh, there was one uh, part in the ordinance that had been originally released that still said administrator instead of recorder. Now I want to make sure we can point out, and this is some education for members of the public, the city charter says you're allowed to uh, make a change to an ordinance that's already been published provided it doesn't substantially change uh, what's going on here. So we couldn't add additional provisions like um, 
Uh, we couldn't add fees into this on the fly, but we can change the word administrator to recorder because we're just changing the title and that's not a substantial change. That's already been agreed to by the council. So that's that. Any questions? Yeah, I got a question. Yes, sir. When it comes to like, you know, we had that problem with that car that got trashed out there. Is there anything to be done where the city has more authority to have a tow company come out and get it and take it instead um, of all the hassle that was going on with it? No, there are, there are other ordinances and laws that apply to that, um, kind of beyond that. There are solid waste and other uh, kind of refuse and littering laws that already apply, so this isn't, isn't something that needed to be addressed by that. So there really wasn't much change to convert it to an ordinance other than basically a declaration. That yeah. The, other than charging a fee. Yeah, is charging the fee and making sure that people get insurance if they're going to do this and indemnifying. That's per vendors, right? Yep. Um, oh, and the other change was there that right now we have a rule that says you can't advertise uh, on city parks except by putting stuff on the board. The one change I added to this was to allow um, specifically, um, I can waive that for uh, government agencies or associations in which the city is a member. So if ELUCC wants to have a booth, exactly, where they, they come up and advertise, here's what you know we do, call 811 you know, before you dig, uh, we wouldn't charge them a fee. They can just come up and do it. Um, okay. So do we have to have a motion on this? Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll just keep going through the script. Okay. Okay, so I'm Does anyone on the council staff have any questions? Public testimony. All persons wishing to testify on behalf of the ordinance will now testify. Remember to give your name, address for the report. Okay. I have any? a comment. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Go for it. Uh, uh, thank you for allowing me to talk. Um, when we were talking about the citywide, yes. Have a little bit. Okay, does that also include they have to provide their own insurance? And we talked about charging them per table, per area, and uh, so how would we handle that? Okay, so the way that would be handled is if anybody wants to have a garage sale on their own property right now, they right. can do that. Um, if somebody wants to come and do a sale of their stuff on city property, mm -hmm. then that's when this would apply. So everybody would have to pay their own fee for their own table. Okay. And I, they could probably jointly purchase to get an insurance certificate. We're mm -hmm. part of uh, City County Insurance Services, and they provide a low-cost insurance writer that people can get. Like, you know, uh, one day to do a garage sale like that okay. would be $100. So you all could jointly pull that together, and that'd be that. Okay, and then my second question was, it was my understanding that there is three areas that you post things to the public of the, the citizens of, so, and besides your front door yes where are the other two down there on we, the board we post there on the bulletin board and okay. the other one we posted at the park across the street on the bathroom door so it's all in this area all in this area okay. yeah okay. and I, I posted yeah. it online several Website. places there's yeah. a, a, a friends of sodaville facebook group and there's almost 300 people in it so i don't know if you're in that um, <laughs> Uh, but I, I posted on the website, and I, I posted there for the, the few hundred people in the area that have joined the group. That's way too many. I know, right? <laughs> it goes clear to the river. <laughs> it's stupid. Well, the, the uh, yeah, so that's, that's where I posted it, just so people know. And that's there. Okay, that's fine. <coughs> to, yeah. I'm going to have to go back to the other two and we ask for public comment. Yeah. So you're going to have to okay. put them up there. Do any members of council or staff have any questions? All, all people wish to testify in opposition of this ordinance now testify. Please give your name and address for the records. Does council members or staff have any questions? Other persons want to testify. Does anyone wish to testify in rebuttal of any testimony that has been offered? Okay. Before I close or continue this public hearing, are there any additional questions from council members, staff, anyone? Testified. Once the hearing has been closed, only count members may speak. Okay, hearing none, the public hearing is now closed. The City Council may now discuss the ordinance and make a decision. So 
sounds to me like something that we should have done quite a while. Mm -hmm. Something we kind of did almost I mean, all the time. we got to have authority to... to it, 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 it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like I said, we got to have authority to push our roles, right? Yeah. We need to keep the city safe. Yeah. So we have a motion to uh, adopt this ordinance. That, we'll just keep reading the script. Huh? <laughs> Not the script. <laughs> what is the script? we got to go back to the script. Follow the script? <laughs> I, yeah, follow the script. Alex. I know, I know. <laughs> It just says now that council discussed yeah. this ordinance and that's that the decision. Okay, yeah, so if we want to do it, the, the motion officially would be I move to adopt ordinance 2205. That's the motion you need. Yep. Make the motion you adopt ordinance 2205. We got a second on that. I second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. All right. Continuing with this item, there was a hope that uh, we would be talking about like, appointments to the City uh, Recreation and Community Affairs Committee. The person who had planned that event at the City Park last week said they were going to be here to come and talk to us and are not here today. Um, so I wanted to make sure we, we, have, we have an understanding of how we're supposed to be managing our parks. Um, so the City Charter again says the Council creates committees, the Mayor nominates them and the Council confirms them. In 1980, we created the Recreation and Community Affairs Committee, uh, and we have a list of responsibilities that are printed below, along with the original misspellings from way back in the day. Yeah, that's in there. It's fun. Um, so right now, the, the city website says there's a Parks Committee, but the duties of a Parks Committee are really supposed to be under this committee. So the hope was to uh, get people appointed to that. should be noted that um, the, uh, the list of people who are supposed to be on there includes a teenager, a senior, the school superintendent, and at least one person from outside the city uh, to serve on this committee. And these, this committee was supposed to have between three to five members. So if we get a teenager, a senior, the school superintendent probably doesn't want to do it, mostly because the school superintendent doesn't exist anymore. Um, but I guess we would talk to the charter school to see if they want to have somebody there. Um, and then somebody who lives outside the city. So the person who planned that event last week was interested in uh, doing that, but I think they should probably come to a council meeting to talk about it um, because the council might want to ask some questions during the confirmation hearing. Uh, so that was kind of why we put this here because they said they were going to be here to talk about being on it, but they're not here, so you snooze, you don't get appointed. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Parks and Committee. Yeah, so the, the comprehensive plan wanted this to be the, the Parks Committee, and it is still on the book as a committee that's supposed to be there. It's just vacant. There are several committees that were officially created that just aren't staffed right now. I think the only city committee that is fully appointed at the moment is the Budget Committee. Everything else is vacant. You want to be on the Parks Committee thing? Yeah. I told you I did. Yeah? Well, we could do that right now if you want to. He's a teenager, right? <laughs> At heart. Well, uh, if you would like to be appointed, the mayor can appoint you right now. It's up to the mayor. Would you like to be appointed? Right, or, or, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 I can appoint you then. You know, on the parks committee. All right. There needs to be a a, uh, a motion from the council to uh, confirm Miss Peggy Bishop to serve on the Recreation and Community Affairs Committee. Mouthful. Don't we need other? Uh, I mean, I mean, we do Peggy right now, but don't we need other people to? Well, in order for it to meet, it does need to have at least three members. I mean, but this is a start. If if you don't want me, I won't do it. No, 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 no. no. I, I think it's want great. To, I'm just wondering. I mean, we could yeah. one person, you know, a committee yeah. of one. Not well, like a committee of one isn't going to be able to meet even. But exactly. it's a start. If we wanted, we could just delay it. She could. No, that's good. Yeah, if you wanted to find some other no, people, let's go she ahead. If she's, yeah. if she's good, I'll, yeah. I'll make a motion to appoint okay. Peggy Bishop on the on the recreation on the committee. recreation committee. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm a great party. Oh, motion carries. And I know other people not yeah. so good. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Well, that's the end of that item. Oh, yeah. uh, the next one is public hearing on Ordinance 2206. So, start with the script again. <coughs> Same script. Uh, yep. Uh, okay. I'm going to dig it back out again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, one of these days. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, we'll so we also on. needed there to have been a motion to read the ordinance by title only. Can somebody make that ordinance? Do it, do it, do it. I make a motion that you read it by title only. There you go. 
and then that puts it back in the script. I will now. And then a second by. I'll second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And Aye. then I will read the ordinance by title only. Uh, ordinance okay. 2205, adopting city park rules and declaring emergency. Okay. So that's this one. So now I, I got to read the script. Right? Yep. Okay. Now, now open the public hearing to consider the ordinance. The hearing will be conducted as follows. I will make an opening state statements, set the ground rules. This will be followed by this disclosure of ex parte contact and conflict of interest on the part of members, council members, city recorder, elected senators will present the ordinance. Council members may question of the speaker at any point of the hearing. The public will have the opportunity to ask questions during the public testimony. When testifying, please give your name, address for the recording. For those of you testifying, please give a testimony related to the application and be as concise as possible. Although this is not necessary, in most hearings we may ask you to limit your testimony to, to no more than three minutes. Does any member of the audience have any objection to the city council jurisdiction this matter? Does any member of the city council have any conflict of interest with regards to the request? Yeah, so Councilor Jackman is going to have to recuse himself from this one as well. Uh, this uh, amendment or this ordinance is about amending our fee ordinance. It's mostly about parks, but we are going to amend our uh, our water prices. So uh, because he is a vendor that deals with water, he will have to recuse himself. Okay. Is any member? Don't worry, we still love you. Does any member of the city council have any interest with regards to this request? If no, please indicate the nature. Of it. If yeah. Indicate the nature of the conflict of interest and leave the council table meet as necessary. You want me to go sit over there? No. If you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not really what I mean. Has any council member had pre hearing con con contact or any party involved with this case, either for or against? Both? I should say so. the, uh, this ordinance was initiated uh, primarily, uh, partly by uh, Councillor Olivares uh, because uh, she noticed there's a problem with our, our water rates. Uh, during water restriction, all the prices are supposed to go up for this tier. For some reason, it goes down. So that's why it's on here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, and then the other one, again, is the parks. And um, we talked about in the last uh, ordinance is that we talked primarily Council President Oliveira's and Mayor Perry about this kind of mess we're in and the need. Yeah, see many people get awarded for using more water and restrictions. Yeah, so. yeah right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. so does anyone of the council staff have any questions? All people wishing to testify on, the, on behalf of the ordinance will now test, testify. Remember to give your name and address for the record. Does any council member or staff have any questions? All people people wishing to testify in opposition for, of this ordinance will now testify. Please give your name and address for the record. So I, I think I need to summarize it. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So to, to summarize this, we're, we're doing uh, a few specific things. Uh, one is we're amending the city uh, fee ordinance. That's what we're doing here. The three things we're amending. One, uh, during water restriction, one of our tiers will go up instead of down. Uh, we will fix that. Two dollars per thousand up. Exactly. A little over. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now it goes down, so this is, this is the up. Yeah, I don't know. It's yep. Um, and that's, that tier number is currently in our non-restriction, but for a lower, for a higher one, so we're, we're just taking that number. It wasn't arbitrary, it's used in a different tier system. Uh, so then uh, we look at using uh, city parks and city property. So uh, specifically we look at uh, sales at city parks, so the idea will be if you live in the city limits, uh, you would have to pay a $25 fee uh, to have a booth or a garage sale or that kind of thing. And if you live outside the city minutes, you would have to pay a $50 fee. And then uh, we also look at using the same thing for uh, City Hall, if you want to use City Hall for something. If you live in the city limits, you have to pay 25 If you live outside, you have to pay 50 But we can waive it for other government agencies or associations that within which we are a member. So if we want to have an ELUCC meeting here or Aquacog, you know, something like that, uh, well, I can just say, yeah, you're good. Come on, we want to have you from DeSotoville. That's not for uh, little Julie's birthday, right? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just making sure that we don't have to go up there and kick them off our property if they're yeah. having a birthday party. <laughs> yeah. Well, there, yeah, this is about, uh, this applies to selling. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. just making a statement. 
one thing itself per case. Right. Okay, so I know we've got every testimony set up again here. Also, people wish to testify that this ordinance please now testify a member to give your name and address. Do any council members have any questions? Do staff have any questions? And any people wish you do testify in opposition of this ordinance will now testify. Please give your name and address and for the record. Do any council members for staff have any questions? Do any people wish to testify? Does anyone wish to testify in a battle in a testimony? <laughs> uh, oh, no. I need to record this thing, I'll tell you, it's just about Okay. Before I close it and continue this hearing, are there any additional questions from council members, staff, or anyone has to testify? Once the hearing has been closed, only council members may speak, or staff may speak. Hearing none, the public hearing is now closed. The City Council shall now discuss the ordinance and make a decision. I think it's about time. I'm happy to see it. Yep. Another one of those rules that just kind of went by the wayside. So. Yes. Okay. <coughs> yes. I ask for a motion now to uh, adopt this ordinance. Well, yeah, first will be a uh, motion to read by title only. There was not already a motion, right? That was earlier, right? Yeah. No, no, no. That was okay. for the last yeah, ordinance. Last so okay. this is no, for the last ordinance. Was, okay. Yeah, sorry. We okay. needed to do that last time, so we did it late. We're doing it on time now. Need a motion. Need a motion. Read ordinance twenty two oh six by title only. I make a motion that we read ordinance twenty two oh six by title only. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Okay. Yeah. And then the motion to adopt it. Now we need, now we need a motion to adopt ordinance. Well, it's the title. No. Okay, yeah. <laughs> ordinance 2206, <laughs> amending 1701 and declaring, uh, amending ordinance 1701 and declaring emergency. I make a motion to approve ordinance 2206, amending ordinance 1701 and declaring an emergency. All in favor? I second it. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You abstain again. Yep. Motion still carries. Okay. That's that. Phew. Now, that's all I have. Okay, the last the last big one is uh, the contract review board. So you'll just have to say I call the contract review board session to order. Okay, I call the contract review <laughs> board session to order. Oh. I go with that one. Uh, it's, it's at the very last page of your, your regular packet, so it's, it's a very small one. Uh, so, staff summary? Yeah, staff summary. So uh, we use uh, Coons, Velasquez, and Associates for our uh, audit firm. This is the contract to have them audit us again. So uh, uh, you make the motion. Okay, yeah. That's it. No discussion. We're all good. Okay. Second. We know what it's about. Favorite, that motion. Aye. 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 Motion carries. And then you close the contract review board. Probably okay. a record. We close that in less than a minute. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Now we got old business. Is there any old business? Uh, did you reach out to the county about the property tax situation? Uh, no, I have not. Hmm. I. I would need. I, I want to get. Uh, I ask you to find out what the lot number is, so I can okay. contact you. All right, we'll get that to you. Get that. Get that to me, and I'll go. We'll talk to him. Perfect. Okay. So I guess now time for public comment. Okay, public. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, just a yes or no question. Maybe. <laughs> you said that our water bills went. Uh, uh, not necessarily the amount would increase, but the amount used, like gallonage, because it went from um, like fifteen ninety per month to twenty one twelve. So that was the change. Yeah, that our that I guess. Yes or no? I'm not understanding your question. You don't. The new meters are okay. more accurate than the old meters. Okay, well, right. But when you first changed them. You said we're going to see a difference in how much water was used, and that was because they needed to be changed. 
because my water bill went up and I haven't used any more than I thought I right, had. Right, because these are more accurate. Yeah. Okay, okay, good to know. Okay, I just want to make a comment to everybody who made comment about the last time, and we've been dealing with this for two years, that uh, I, as a citizen of Sotoville, don't want to deal with the city of Lebanon with having it brought in from Cascade Drive, just making my opinion known. And also, I believe that the water situation brought on by the old predecessor of Alex's was given up too easily, given up on too easily, and there should have, could have been a solution found, but I just don't think that the council was given an, enough room to work a little harder on it. And, and I know I was involved in that. You were involved in that. I'd just like to make a comment. I think that uh, the previous people that were kind of in charge of that whole thing mm -hmm. misrepresented everything. I, mean, I believe total so. mess out of all of it. So I agree with it because the people right there. Yeah. because because our our well was tested too. Yeah. The only thing I mean, our well, my well, I'm using right now to irrigate my garden, and I get 55 gallons per minute. And mine is right down the hill from Ray's. The only difference between his well and my well is I have arsenic in my well, and you don't, correct? Right? Okay, so that's the only difference, and we have a lot of calcium, but it's nowhere near our home. We don't put it in our home. It's away from our home. We use it for irrigation only. But I'm telling you, I agree with what your answer was from Ted Nugent. <laughs> um, anyway, when you said that. He said, you have lots of water in Soto. He's absolutely right. I mean, look at the pond up there, that boat, a boat he had. I mean, that was all groundwater right. when he put that pond in there. The one on Tim's property? Oh, yeah. It, that's been there for years. I, that's what I'm talking I about. I was a kid and it was there. And, and we have a hole in the ground that fills up every year. There's nothing we can do about it because it yeah. um, three minutes. I yeah. my three. I I'm timing my thing. Uh -huh. I didn't have a gavel. I'm just saying. Yeah. My gavel. I'm just saying. Yeah. I got my three things. Yeah. 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 Sergeant at Arms warning us, right? Well, he she's, interrupted me. She's a Sergeant at Arms, so I had it after her. Oh. Anyway, I said what I wanted to say. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Uh, you know, Peggy, I'll make a comment. I've been doing a study on the water study, mm -hmm. and it completely threw me off guard as to what happened there. It was yes. the whole thing, but now it's over, and now we just got to move on yes. and figure out if yep. the water. Ours was yeah. tested in the snow, just so you know. <clears throat> okay. 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 Uh, Joe? Go. Um. <clears throat> I know I'm just a citizen, but I do like the idea of the Oregon Cascades West Council of Governments. I think that's something we should pursue as a, as a city. Um, along with Peggy, well, kind of, um, I don't like the idea of tying in with Lebanon because that loses our little bit of control of what we have here. And once you start letting the state and other bureaucrats get into us, who knows what could potentially happen. Um, I like the idea of cooperating with Waterloo because um, we really only need the water in the summertime. Like, and if we had these wells, we would still use ours through the year, and this would be like an emergency. So I'm just, we don't need an answer. Make our like, public works trick. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would we only need the water in the summer? Secondly, don't we already have a well that we can't use because it's contaminated or something? Um, yeah. I just, yeah. I'm just yes. throwing yes. this out. Yeah. Um, and then with like land use permits to get to these wells or whatnot. Um, my idea with that is if we're able to get money from the state or cities, like why can't we like 
improve our, I'm going to call it infrastructure, even though that's probably not the right thing, but like, yeah, it is. Um, you know, we're talking millions of dollars and even, you know, 150 to 300 to 500,000. I mean, that's easy money if you talk to the right people and have the right grants. And then, um, just an idea, and this is where I'll just end it, is when did we start hauling the water? We, we have not yet. yet. We have, okay. Okay, so we, we haven't yet. Um, oh, and back to the wells, like what uh, Mr. Nugent had said, I'm right off of Spring Street, Doug, um, he has a well, it's 100 feet from where my well's at, and I remember in September when I pulled the lid off, I could see water like 20 feet down, and what he said is Spring Street, there's a spring running right underneath there, <laughs> there is. and that's a lot like down by Jackman's property, like there's a wet section always, usually even in the summer, I don't know if it dries up or not, but like that. Um, well, well location, or like if we're able to drill a well, I don't know what type of pumping it would need, but to like even pump it up to one of these wells that per containers we have, that's not. Oh. Anyway, I just I, I was I was told at the previous previous by some people that there's an underground river somewhere in Soto. I don't know. Mm -hmm. My well drill, unfortunately, that well drill is now dead. But that White House on Denny Street down there. Yeah, the Yoder's old house. Yep. Well, the one right there on the highway, on the sort of cut off oh. road. Mm -hmm. That one there, when you were there in the house the summertime, you could hear water running under the house like fucking river. Oh. Excuse my language, but okay. I mean, you Whoops. could hear this water come through the like you wouldn't believe um, in the summertime. I don't, know what it, I don't know what it's run up water or what it is, but there is water out there. So, you can answer two of your things. If we go to a municipal water, like Waterloo treatment mm -hmm. or Lebanon, Lebanon, then the wells would not be used. Okay, oh, so oh, I know the one with Lebanon wouldn't be right. used, but so I was just thinking if we were sharing can't. with... We're talking about city yeah. wells specifically. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. City, city wells. Because you can't yeah. Yeah. mix the water. Yeah. We do it as an emergency during okay. those months. But well, yeah. I would just see that that yeah. doesn't seem yeah. right if we already have our own... Yeah, yeah. we don't have that. Like I say, you have wells. Well, fire cannot be used because of iron bacteria. Okay. And the other thing that you were talking about like down there, yep. that it's boiling out the ground, you know, there around. Pranks. They call this soda bill for a reason. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a soda water bill. It's, it's sweet soda water. water. Sweet water. And that's something we brought up with every single representative mm -hmm. that we met. Why do you think we're called soda bill? Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're sitting on it right here. Yeah, the yep. city that, so we really are vested. I mean, I think there may have been an impression that we were kind of stubborn and we didn't want to look at any other options. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we've helped kind of overcome we're, that. We're mm -hmm. I'm trying to be very yeah, nice. Okay. Um, but I think we got the impression out that we're open to suggestions, but we really love our water and yeah. we want to keep it as much as we can. We well, like yeah, Waterloo. It's our revenue. I do have a feeling that we're all kind of on the same, yep. same yeah. page, I and I was just <coughs> expressing. And they actually asked, asked me that. Do you guys agree on this? It's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. And then I guess, well, I know I went over three minutes, but I just want to appreciate everything you guys were doing. Um, Any more public yes, comment? Especially yeah. Alex. When, when, one thing. Way back we had well number two drilled. We had that well, we had that we had three different witchers go out there witch water on that well mm -hmm. on that property site. They all said we had hundred gallons per minute water at thirty five feet. And that well was drilled, it, it went down hundred and fifty feet before you test how much water coming out of that out of that ground. Mm -hmm. Because at seventy five feet the wells are not make any money. Yes. So if we put another well in right next to that one at 75 feet, we may have all the water we want. Who knows? Without having a witch. But you can't use the dual, dual aquifers. So right. he had 150 foot, had 125 foot of casing down there before he tested how much water was in that well. What a jerk. <coughs> I was on staff at the time. I was supposed to uh, oversee this well drilling, and he was not supposed to touch the ground with the drill until I was on site. When I was up there, he was right down to 120, 150 to 25 feet drilling that well. <clears throat> he put the well on every 25 feet of what he found. Right. He had no well on whatsoever. He estimated, oh, they may have found this, found this, and found this. Yeah. But, yeah. So, there again. Yeah. You know, Any more public comment? Yeah. Huh? 
I was just wondering if there is any more public comment. Yeah. Yeah. City right. Council packets, if you want to run for City Council, are due by August 30th. You need two signatures to get on the ballot. Come get them from yeah. me. No, 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 no. No. Council reports. Yeah. Yes, I said that's the last public yeah. Oh, okay. Council Remember reports is next. Yeah. Okay. Check Am I making it? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, they, I... We need to set me up to have access to our city's online banking. I've been using, I think, Roger's bank, Roger's account, which he probably might not have even know existed. Uh, but the, yeah, I, I do not have access to that anymore, sadly. So if I want to get online, I have to have Adina sign in. We don't want to have that happen. We want me to do that. So um, on Tuesday, we're going to go to Chase Bank to get me set up for online banking. Um, so what we need to have the council do is, um, and it could just be that they're able to just give me something to go online. It's also possible that in order to set me up to have online access, they need, may need me to be a check signer. And that would, if we have the, the council would need to vote right now to allow me to be a check signer or have online banking access, uh, just in case it needs to be a check signer. If it just ends up being that I need online access, then we wouldn't make me a check signer. Um, but we need to have the council vote to permit both options. Yeah. And the, the big thing to emphasize here, if I become a vote a, a check signer officially, I'm not going to be signing any checks because it is a really bad idea. It's just to get me an online bank account. So you could wonder what's going on. Yes. yes. And, and you wanted, he could. Yeah. Yes. We've gone through the paperwork to get him, get it to a, we got city access, but he can't use it for property liability. And, and I would prefer yeah. not not to use my username and password mm -hmm. to go right. on because yeah. that makes me nervous. Um, I'm happy to come up, but I think and log in and sit there with him. But I think that's not a good waste of his time or my time. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, if we really want to have a good checks and check and balance, pun intended, is I know with Chase we can set alerts. I can set alerts on my account. I get a text every time something's spent, sent more over than a dollar. So if anybody's uncomfortable with the thought of him having this access and or signing checks, we can set up alerts, or I'm, I'd be happy to go in monthly and review it, but Linda's also reviewing checks. Yes. So we're going to have checks and balances, but yeah. just those options. Yeah. What do you think, Jeff? I think it's a good idea. I, I do. I think, you know, okay. we've got to trust our city administrator. As long as there's checks and balances, I think... Uh, I recorded. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm gonna get rubbed out. Another thing to know about the, the check and balance is that if I somehow become a check signer, uh, the auditor is going to see that, and if they see that I've signed a check, that's going to show up and go, yeah, "Oh, that's, that's really bad." Of and yeah. I don't want to see my name in a bad audit well, report in the Secretary of State. The only thing but, that saves your butt there is it takes two signatures to make that check go through. Yes. Yeah. I, and I think that's where something we ought to do with whatever happens. Yeah. I don't think you can get past any of these people. And that, I, yeah. that's why no. that's put so it that's, by. I make the motion that we send Alex to the bank of, for the city to either become a signer or get the online banking credentials. I, I, I would be going to go with the bank. I second it. Uh, okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No one carries. Okay. Okay. Last one's adjournment. Uh, yeah. I make a motion we adjourn. I'll second it. Uh, I'll second it. I'll second it. Anyway, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. now, I appreciate all you people. Yeah. 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 Y